Think on it this way. Two circles. The larger outer circle, you call the circle of concern. Things you're concerned about. Things you're worried about. But then there is an inner circle. It's very small. That are concerns you have influence over. Where do proactive people focus their energies? Which circle? The inner circle. Where do reactive people focus their energies? The outer circle. Why? Because they're victimized. Look at this person I have to live with. Look at how my boss has dead-ended my career. She says she has an open mind, but she has a closed mind. Look at these kids. They're driving me crazy. Why do you choose to go crazy? Well, I mean, what else could you do? (laughs) What else could you do? Well, I don't know. Think. I don't know. Think. What other alternatives do you have other than going crazy? I don't know. (laughs) Think hard. (laughs) I guess I could maybe try to rebuild a relationship to a point that we could come up with some discipline agreements. What's your choice? You have the power. Always treat people as if they're proactive. The more irresponsible they are, the more you teach them about their response ability. Always work on the inner circle. It is a marvelous thing. It is inevitable. Inevitable. If you work on the inner circle, it'll get larger. Always. Why? The energy there is positive. You're doing something at the outside edge of that inner circle that wins more confidence with other people. The way you treat them the way you make and keep promises, the way you apologize when you make mistakes, the way you gather feedback, the way you give feedback, the way you're trying to play God in someone's life, the way you seek to understand what's important to the other so that your presentations are made in terms of their frame of reference, their language, their value system. You're constantly making deposits into the emotional bank account. But if you focus on the outer circle, you're taking withdrawals, you're judging, you're criticizing, you don't seek to understand, you're not consistent, all in the name of their inconsistency. You overreact in the name of their overreaction. You badmouth them behind their back, unaware that the people you're talking to as you do the badmouthing know you're going to do the same thing about them when there's a strain on that relationship. If you want to retain those who are present, my friends, always be loyal to those who are absent. They know you're principle-centered. They know you're just not sucking up to the social value system. That you're a person of integrity, that have standards. You will not participate in negative energy exchanges or do anything that in any way would create a feeling of disrespect toward another person. Because they know that would attach to them sometime under another situation. That's why you would never confide with one child about another. Or make comparisons or quick quips and judgments and labels. Because you create a culture that they know you're doing the same thing about them when the situation changes. No, there's a steadiness about you. That is based on principles that never change not based upon moods that are volatile and mercurial that are always going up and down. So by working on the inner circle, it gets larger and larger and larger. And eventually you begin to deal with some of those concerns that you have that today you couldn't even begin to touch. I could take you to not tens, but to hundreds, perhaps even thousands by now, of organizations that are going through a profound transformation and it started with a person at the bottom who worked on the circle of influence, who took responsibility, who was patient, lived the law of the harvest, who the circle of influence gradually got larger and larger. In most cases, 
they came in contact with someone that had a huge circle of influence. Then, leverage, multiplication took place. Exponential leverage. They started to influence entire divisions, entire companies, multi-billion multinationals. 